Okay, hello and welcome back. In today's lesson, we'll go through uh, section 4.1, the pre prelim preliminary theory on linear equations. So to start us off, we're going to consider the nth order differential equation a sub n of x nth derivative to the n sub n. And we have them all the way down the line a sub n minus 1 of x and the n minus 1 derivative. And we go all the way down the line, uh, a sub 1 of x, and that would be then just multiplied by dy dx uh, plus some a naught of x is worth g of x. I've got to squeeze my little y in there. It's worth g of x. So we have some differential equation, nth order, so the nth is the biggest derivative. The biggest derivative is a fourth. Then this is a fourth order differential equation. If the biggest is just a square, second order differential equation. Uh, and this is subject to some initial conditions. So y of x naught is y naught, or y prime of x naught is worth y sub 1, etc. So we're going to let all a sub i of x, so in other words, each of these guys. So i is uh, on the integers from 0 to n. And we're also letting g of x be continuous on some interval i. And a sub i of x is non zero. Uh, I don't remember if I've used this symbol with you all before, but this is for all. If for all x on interval i. So each of these uh, quote unquote coefficients, they could be uh, functions in variable x. Uh, each one of them is non zero for every x on the interval. Uh, so they're continuous, non-zero, uh, then if x equals x naught is on this interval, then there exists unique solution. So if backwards capital E is there exists, exclamation mark after that, exclamation mark after that means there exists a unique, then there exists a unique solution. On I. All right, so a lot to unpack. It's easier to sort of walk through when we have an example to sort of demonstrate what, what they mean in English with that stuff. So for example, let's look at y double prime minus 8y is worth 6x. 
So this is a second order differential equation. We're still linear uh, in terms of y. So a sub 2 of x here is 1. So the coefficient of the second derivative, see I'm written 1. Uh, a sub 0 of x, or also called a naught of x, is a negative 8. And g of x is 6 times x. All three of those are continuous on, really we could go all the way negative infinity to infinity. So they're continuous everywhere on the real number line. So a sub 2 of x is worth 1. That is not equal to 0. A naught of x is worth negative 8, also not equal to 0 for all x on negative infinity, infinity. Um, we don't care if g of x is 0. In fact, for a homogeneous uh, equation, it would, in fact, be a 0 park there. That's okay. It does have to be continuous. It uh, doesn't have to follow this non-zero rule. Uh, that the a sub i's all have to follow. So we, we, we met both criteria. We're continuous on this interval i. Uh, all of the a sub i's were non-zero for every I, x on our interval i. Um, so what that tells us then is that there exists a unique solution to this differential equation. on interval i, i here being negative infinity to infinity. So that's one where we got to keep the whole number line, all the real numbers. Uh, this next one we'll have to make a little bit of a restriction. So let's look at x minus 4, y double prime, plus 8y is worth 12. So a sub 2 of x is x minus 4, since that's attached to our second derivative. a naught of x is worth 8, and g of x here is 12. So all three of these are continuous uh, negative infinity, infinity. Uh, however, for a sub 2 of x, x minus 4 is equal to 0, and x equals 4, so we will have to restrict our domain. Uh, a naught of x equals 8 is not equal to 0 everywhere. So our domain, uh, our interval, will not include the 4. Uh, so uh, we have basically two i's to choose from. We can either pick our negative infinity up to but not including 4, or we could go 4 to infinity. Um, sometimes uh, you get to pick. Sometimes the author says uh, pick one centered on 0. If they want one centered on 0, we'd have to go with this first guy. Uh, if it just says find an interval where this happens, uh, either one of these. So on either of these intervals, there exists unique uh, solutions. I realized I did not write the word solution on there on the last example. So just because you find somewhere where one of them is zero, that doesn't mean that uh, there's not a unique solution elsewhere. It just means at that spot where you found the zero, uh, your interval can't uh, sit there. 
cannot include that. Thing. So next we look at what's called a boundary value problem. This is really the same idea that we've seen before with initial conditions. Uh, the only difference is our inputs are not necessarily the same uh, for the initial conditions. So X, T, whatever your input letter is. Uh, so for example, if we have y double prime plus 4y equals 0, um, this one has the general solution of y equals c1 cosine of 2x plus c sub 2 sine of 2x. We asked us to find a particular solution subject to how would I pick here y of pi over 8 is 11 root 2 over 2 and y prime of pi is 6 so that's really the only big differences uh, before with initial conditions they would basically give you the same uh, same input for both the ideas are the same. So for our solution, uh, first we're going to have to find um, y prime since that's one of our initial conditions. So y prime would be, so the derivative of c1 cosine of 2x would be negative 2c1 sine of 2x. And our derivative c2 sine of 2x would be plus 2 c2 cosine of 2x and if we want to verify that their solution is correct we would also need to find y double prime so y double prime then um, so I want the derivative of negative 2 C1 sine of 2x, so that would be negative 4 C1 cosine of 2x, and derivative of 2 C2 cosine of 2x would be negative 4 C2 sine of 2x. So verifying that this thing is correct, uh, y double prime, so the thing we just found, negative 4 C1 cosine of 2x, minus 4c2 sine of 2x plus 4 times y c1 cosine of 2x plus c2 sine of 2x we want to confirm that that does indeed spit out a zero that we had hoped well all I've got to do is distribute and hit some like terms so negative 4c sub 1 cosine of 2x minus 4 c sub 2 sine of 2x distributing we have plus 4 c sub 1 cosine of 2x plus 4 c sub 2 sine of 2x and that is possibly equal to 0 and then sure enough negative 4 c 1 cosine of 2x positive 4 c 1 cosine of 2x uh, negative 4 c2 sine of 2x positive 4 c2 sine of 2x we do get 0 equals 0 so yeah their their solution uh, as we uh, probably suspected was indeed correct uh, so now we want to work on getting the particular solution so let's just kind of plug in these guys in uh, so let's see so um, this one, um, I'm going to start with the pi. 
uh, or the reason for that then uh, remember in trig uh, the sine of pi is 0 sine of 2 pi also a 0 uh, so that will knock out the C1 and we can find C2 more quickly so then I'll start with the y prime so 6 is equal to negative 2 C sub 1 sine of 2 input of pi plus 2 C sub 2 cosine of 2 pi as I mentioned sine of 2 pi is 0 we just made a full lap around the y coordinate it's still 0 uh, so then 6 is worth 2 c sub 2 cosine of 2 pi is just a 1. So c sub 2 is 3. So then we'll use this guy to find c sub 1. So finding c sub 1, we're going into the original y equals. So our output, our y should be 11 root 2 over 2. C sub 1, we don't have a value yet. Cosine of 2 by pi over 8. Plus C sub 2, I now know that to be a 3. Sine of 2 times pi over 8. So 11 root 2 over 2 is worth C sub 1 cosine of pi over 4 plus 3 sine of pi over 4. So 11 root 2 over 2 <coughs> is equal to c sub 1 cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2 plus 3 times sine of pi over 4 also root 2 over 2. Uh, so we can multiply everything by basically uh, 2 over root 2 and get rid of those and we have 11 is equal to c sub 1 uh, plus 3 so c sub 1 is 8 so then our particular solution will be y equals instead of c sub 1 8 cosine of 2x Plus, instead of c sub 2, we figured that out. That was a 3 sine of 2x. So that's a boundary value problem uh, where uh, we were given basically multiple inputs that we had to match. Okay, so next uh, we look at uh, homogeneous differential equations. Let y sub 1, y sub 2 up to y sub k be solutions to the nth order homogeneous. differential equation on interval i. If I do any linear combination of these guys, that is also then going to be a solution on i. disregard that extra parenthesis. I got a little carried away there. And any KF. definition 
where we get into some examples. So two solutions are linearly independent. And interval i, if there exists c1, c2, to cn, not all zero, such that c1, y1 of x plus c2, y2 of x plus dot 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 plus C sub n x uh, y sub n of x equals zero for all x on interval i. Oop, my apologies, that was linear dependence. So two solutions are linearly dependent, my apologies there dependent on interval i if uh, we can find some linear combination that spits out a zero for all the x on that interval. Uh, if it's not dependent, then it is independent. So if it's not dependent, it is independent. All right, so I got some of the formal theory written out. Let's look at a nice way to actually uh, test it out. So that is what's called the Ron skin. It's a way to test for linear independence. So we let y sub 1 of x, all of our solutions basically, y sub 2 of x, y sub n of x. We have to have at least n minus 1 derivatives. And we make the Ronskin as a determinant. So top row, we just list out our solutions. Then we do our first derivatives of each. Yeah, we make it a square, so we go to the n minus 1 derivative. So basically the zeroth derivative for a second, third. So there's n of these, there's n of those make it a square. So that's our Ronskin. If our Ronskin is non-zero for all x on i, then y1, y2, etc. are independent, linearly independent. on whatever interval we're working on. All right, so let's, uh, let's actually put this uh, to work for us. So let's say that uh, we're told that y1 is e to the 7x and y2 equals e to the negative 7x. Our solutions to the differential equation y double prime minus 49y is 0.
So we're going to use a round skin to uh, determine linear independence on the infinity infinity. So if y sub 1 was e to the 7x, y sub 1 prime is 7e to the 7x, y sub 2 was e to the negative 7x, so y sub 2 prime is negative 7e to the negative 7x. Uh, we only had two of those, so we needed 2 minus 1 or 1 derivative. So that's enough to make our square here. So e to the 7x. 7e to the 7x, e to the negative 7x, negative 7e to the negative 7x. So a determinant. This is just a 2 by 2 determinant. Uh, you remember these from your college algebra days, hopefully. So we multiply this way, minus that way, and a 2 by 2. So the first diagonal, negative 7, e to the 7x, e to the negative 7x, minus, then we multiply the other way, 7e to the 7x, e to the negative 7x. So here's a 1, here's a 1, so we have negative 7 minus 7, negative 14. That is definitely non-zero for all x on negative infinity, infinity. Negative 14 and 0 are never going to be the same number. Uh, so these are linearly independent. to confirm the solution. I know that you all could uh, get our second derivatives going and check it. Um, and, and this one, I'll, I'll leave it to you to verify that uh, they are indeed both solutions. So next we look at the non-homogeneous examples. We're going to let yp be a particular solution to an nth order differential equation on some interval i. And y sub 1, y sub 2 y sub n, well, I've extra dot there, sorry. So those are going to be a fundamental set of solutions to the homogeneous differential equation on i. So part of it is basically working for the homogeneous part, the equals zero part. Part of it is working for the non-zero part. So then the general solution is y equals c1 y sub 1 of x plus c sub 2 y sub 2 of x plus dot 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 plus c sub n y sub n of x plus yp, our particular solution. So this is the general solution. All right, so an example.
So we're going to have a two parameter family of solutions. We're going to verify that this is also the general solution to uh, what I pick here, x squared y double prime uh, minus 3xy prime plus 4y is x to the fourth. And we're going to do this on uh, 0 infinity. So our proposed solution, y equals uh, c sub 1 x squared plus c sub 2 x squared natural log x plus 1 fourth x to the fourth. So here's our basically c1, y1 of x, c2, y2 of x, and yp. So here y1 is x squared, y2 x squared natural log x, and yp is 1 fourth x to the fourth. So we'll start with the homogeneous part. So that's all this guy. So y1, recall is your x squared, y1 prime is 2x, y1 double prime is 2, y2 is the x squared natural log of x, y2 prime, product rule, 2x natural log x plus x squared times derivative of natural log is 1 over x. And we can do a little simplifying there. So 2x natural log of x plus x. So y2 double prime then, differentiate that. Product rule again on this part of it. Derivative of 2x is 2, so 2 natural log of x. Plus, now we keep the 2x, differentiate natural log. And differentiate the x, which is 1. So y2 double prime. 2 natural log of x plus 2, so the x and 1 over x drop, plus 1, so that's 2 natural log of x plus 3. So we're going to verify that these are indeed solutions to the homogeneous part of this equation. In other words, when the right hand side is 0. So we're going to verify that we'll start with y sub 1 x squared times y double prime, 2, minus 3x times y prime, 2x, plus 4 times y. We want that to equal 0 because, again, this is the homogeneous part, uh, a homogeneous differential equation when I have a 0 over here, not uh, some non-zero g of x function. So we just want to check, does that indeed equal 0? Uh, so we have 2x squared minus 6x squared plus 4x squared possibly equal to 0. And sure enough, 6x squared minus 6x squared is 0. Uh, so that one does satisfy the homogeneous part of the equation. We'll do the same thing now with y sub 2. Uh, so x squared times y double prime. y double prime, recall for y sub 2, uh, was 2 natural log of x plus 3. Then we have minus 3x from the differential equation. y prime for the second one was 2x natural log of x plus x. And then we had plus 4 times the original y x squared natural log x. And we want to know if this is equal to 0 because we're on the homogeneous part, not the particular part. So a little bit of simplifying to do, uh, a little distributive property. So we have 2x squared natural log of x plus 3x squared. Uh, let's see, distributing this guy. Uh, then we have minus 6x squared 
natural log of x minus 3x squared plus 4x squared natural log of x and we're possibly equal to 0 and let's see we have a 2x squared natural log of x plus a 4x squared natural log of x which takes us to 6x squared natural log of x and that'll drop off nicely with that guy 3x squared minus 3x squared is indeed 0 so we do have 0 equals 0 so this guy works as well if it's the general solution we want the homogeneous part to be linearly independent